By the end of this video, you will have cleaner, clearer, and more consistent audio. Hey, I'm Dylan John, and we're gonna start with the quickest and easiest option, all the way down to the more advanced but best sounding option. Definitely useful to know all of them though. By going to your effects browser and typing in voiceover enhancement and double clicking to apply to your dialogue or your voiceover, it should give you better sounding audio instantly. It's not perfect by any means, but it's basically a one click improvement. Hey, I'm Dylan John, and we're gonna start with the quickest and easiest option. Hey, I'm Dylan John, and we're gonna start with the quickest and easiest option. You can switch this to punch voiceover or smooth voiceover, and the difference in the two. This one is perfect when you want your voice to cut through a busy mix, like high energy content, promos, or anything that needs some extra presence. And this one is great for calm narration, tutorials, or anything where you want the voice to feel relaxed and easy to listen to. If you're brand new to Final cut or you just don't want to spend much time on adjusting your voice audio, then the voiceover enhancement effect may be all you'll need. But if you're looking to put a tiny bit more effort into your voice audio to make it sound better, then use the enhance audio feature. By going to the magic wand icon and clicking enhance audio, or by going to modify enhance audio, Final Cut will analyze your audio track and try to make it sound better. You can see what it did by opening up your inspector window, going to the audio inspector here, and making sure you click show to open up the audio enhancements section. Some people wonder where all their settings are because they forget that they need to press show here. Any setting with the blue check mark means Fonica Pro detected an issue and decided that turning on this tool and adjusting it for you would help improve your audio. I find that the enhance audio feature doesn't always do a stellar job at getting your audio exactly how you want it to sound though. So if you do go with this route, you might need to make a few extra tweaks. This loudness section is actually really solid. It basically increases the loudness of your audio, and if you adjust the uniformity, it does a bit of compression so that the quiet parts of your voice get lifted and the whole thing ends up sounding more polished and even. And to top it off, you could add some voice isolation, which is a killer feature in FCP that does an awesome job at keeping your voice clear, but cutting surrounding noise out. Hey, I'm Dylan John, and we're gonna start with the quickest and easiest option. Hey, I'm Dylan John, and we're gonna start with the quickest and easiest option. Sometimes you may want to switch things up a bit, and instead of having your own voice narrate your story or describe your scene, you might prefer to keep things interesting and make it sound like someone else is speaking or doing the voiceover. And that is possible with the sponsor of today's video, Artlist. In the past, if I wanted to try and change my voice in Final Cut Pro, I would go to the effects browser and try the monster effect, which doesn't sound that great in my opinion, or I'd try the helium effect, which maybe works if I'm going for a chipmunk vibe or i would use the pitch effect to adjust my voice but never sounded that good and was just a bit too robotic but artless voice to voice feature works way way better in allowing me to get a different sounding voice for my video and and this is the important point it allows me to keep the same cadence and tone that i normally speak in so if you create documentaries youtube videos or any type of video where you want some variety in the voiceover or narration you just upload the audio file from your footage and you're able to take your voice and change it to something totally different. Aside from this feature, Artless added a ton of new tools like the latest video and image generation models, and they of course have their awesome music, stock footage, and sound effects. So if you're interested in trying the service that I've been using for the longest out of all the ones that I currently use, then the link in the description will get you two months for free. Thanks again to Artless for sponsoring this video. It helps me to keep the videos flowing and keep the lights on in the studio, so I'm greatly appreciative. The third option is the most advanced, but it gives you the most control and it sounds the best in my opinion, other than maybe the last bonus tip that we're gonna go over. So this is all about becoming a little more pro with your voice editing by using a compressor, the channel EQ, and a limiter. All are free built-in effects that can be found in your effects browser. You compress to even out your levels and make your voice more balanced. You EQ to shape your vocal frequencies. And then you add a limiter to boost the final loudness without clipping. Here's a rapid fire walkthrough on what you should set everything to. Normally I explain why we do stuff in videos, but for time's sake, I'm just gonna give you the numbers of what to set stuff to and how to save all the adjustments as a preset. So you can just click to apply that preset in future videos of yours. With your compressor, open it up by pressing this icon. 
Set the ratio either from 2 to 1 to 4 to 1. Set the attack from 1 to 5 milliseconds and set the release from 10 to 30 milliseconds. So if you're wanting some exact numbers that you could dial in right now, set this to 3 to 1, the attack to 3 milliseconds, and the release to 12 milliseconds. Just a heads up that this is more so a template that works for most voice audio rather than fine-tuned personalized settings. Once you have those set up, just swing your threshold down to zero, play your audio, and while your voice audio plays out, slowly increase the threshold until this needle starts hovering anywhere from negative three to negative six decibels. And that needle is in the right zone right now, so we're all good. So in future videos, whenever I apply this preset that we're currently making, I just double check that this needle is hovering where it should be which is that negative three to negative six decibel mark. If not, I just readjust the threshold until it does. Onto the channel EQ effect. Open it up by pressing this icon. We're essentially shaping the voice with this tool. So we reduce the frequencies that don't sound great and enhance the ones that do. Add what's called a high pass filter first by clicking here and dragging downwards and have it stop around the 100 Hertz mark. This removes low-end hums, rumbles, and handling noise that don't belong in a voice recording. Next, grab this little frequency bell and gently boost the 200 to 400 hertz region by a few decibels. This adds a smooth, warm, bassy fullness to your voice. And by the way, these are the decibel marks on the side here. For most of these, we're gonna be adjusting things by three to six decibels. Take the next bell, and dip it a few decibels around the 400 to 600 hertz region and narrow it up to reduce the boxy sounding part of the voice. With the next bell, keep it slightly wider than the others and boost in the 1000 to 4000 hertz region. This is where the clarity in your voice lives. So a small bump here helps your voice cut through the mix. Then take the next bell and narrow it up quite a lot and cut in the 5,000 to 8,000 hertz range to reduce the harsh S and T sounds, which is called sibilance. Your sibilance frequency might be different than mine. Mine is usually around 5,800 hertz. So just move this around until your t sounds don't sound as sharp. Hey, I'm Dylan John, and we're gonna start with the quickest and easiest option. Hey, I'm Dylan John, and we're gonna start with the quickest and easiest option. Lastly, hop into your limiter, change the mode to legacy, change the look ahead to about four milliseconds and the release to about 10 milliseconds. Then you play out your audio and increase the gain here until you see this meter start to kick in and reduce our volume about three decibels. Once you see that this number is about three, you just adjust the output level to finalize whatever volume you want your voice audio to stop at. So basically, what you set this to is gonna be the max volume that your voice volume will ever get to. I usually make this negative three or negative two. That way, my voice audio gets no louder than negative three or negative two decibels, which leaves enough room for me to add sound effects and music so our total mix doesn't go past zero decibels and start to clip. Hey, I'm Dylan John, and we're gonna start with the quickest and easiest option all the way down to the more advanced but best sounding option. Hey, I'm Dylan John, and we're gonna start with the quickest and easiest option all the way down to the more advanced but best sounding option. And most importantly, hit save effects preset down here, change the name to maybe custom voice adjustment, save to whatever category you want, and you can actually create a new category if you'd like. And the next time you're editing a new video and you wanna add all those adjustments without going through that tiresome process that we just went through, go to your effects browser, type in the name of that preset and double click to apply. Once again though, these adjustments are just general settings. I know I'm gonna get some slack in the comments saying you shouldn't do this for this reason and that's probably true. You can still fine tune what we set up today based on your actual voice recordings. But even using those template numbers should make your audio sound so much better. The last way to improve your voice audio is actually a little bonus tip for you, but it is kind of all I use now. Technically it's not an in Final Cut Pro sort of thing, so that's why it's a bonus tip and not part of the list 
but it is a free AI powered audio cleanup tool called Alphonic. Hey, I'm Dylan John, and we're gonna start with the quickest and easiest option. Hey, I'm Dylan John, and we're gonna start with the quickest and easiest option. You could use an iPhone in your pocket and Alphonic would make it sound great. And if you don't believe me, Watch this video because I do just that. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. It would mean a lot to me and you'd learn to create better videos way faster. And thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.